It says, look, then they quote, God's word is giving warning of the impending danger. Let this be unheeded and the Protestant world will learn what the purposes of Rome really are only when it's too late to escape the snare. She is silently growing into a power. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, in the churches, and in the hearts of men. She is piling up her lofty and massive structures in the secret recesses of which her former persecutions will be what? This is the Catholics quoting from Ellen White. Selfly and unsuspectingly, she is strafing her forces to further her own ends when the time shall come for her to what? All that she desires is vantage ground, etc., etc. Bear in mind that these quotes are not taken from an obscure work of Ellen White that nobody ever reads. They are from what is probably her single most popular volume, The Great Controversy. And you think that the general that the that the uh, Catholic Church does not know what the general conference is getting ready to do for the next two years for J Great Controversy 2.0? They, they, they know and they need to be reached, but it's not reached in the way that those other countries need to be reached. Sapphire that now listen to this right here. According to her, to my Ellen White. The papacy is the seven-headed beast from the sea in Revelation 13. Accompanying that beast is the lamp-like beast from the earth. The latter causes the world to worship the former and has an image made of it. Why Ellen White proclaimed that the second beast is who? And that it will force people to worship on the, the papacy by enforcing some observance, which should be an act of homage to the papacy. This observance, she says, is what worship? Sunday worship rather than Saturday worship. Ellen White, this is the Catholic Church. Ellen White claims, oh, this is right here, that the papacy changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday, making this change its mark of authority. In her view, there will come a time when the U.S. will establish a national what? Sunday law and compel its citizens to worship on Sunday. It will not compel them to become Catholics, but to join a Protestant state church that is an image of the papacy, thus the image of the beast. Brothers and sisters, they know what we that that tell me right there. But look at the next paragraph. Oh, look at the next Daphne. You better pass in your seat bills. It's about to knock your feet out from under you. Look what it says. Seven-day Adventism cannot change its views on the Catholic Church being the whore of Babylon without admitting it was wrong on Sunday worship. It talking about seven-day Adventism cannot admit that Sunday worship is not. The mark of the beast without changing its views on the Jewish Sabbath. But look at this seven day Adventism cannot cease to be anti Catholic without ceasing to be seven day Adventism. Wow. That's wow. just planted. Is that clear? Catholic.com on seventh day Adventism. Who? So he tells Daphne, this crazy lady from the Q&A at the beginning. So if you listen to it, we started at like the seven minute mark because they do a little bit of Q&A at the beginning. And this lady, Daphne, he tells her, buckle up because the Catholic Church at Catholic.com admits that the core of Adventism is anti-Catholicism. No, Dr. O, again, you're clueless as to what you're citing. Because you more than likely found something that confirms your bias. You didn't bother taking five minutes to dig. This is an Adventist college professor and pastor, folks. Has no clue what he's even reading. He equates an apologetics website with the Roman Catholic Institution's website to say that the SDA church knows about the Great Controversy Project 2.0. Dr. O, this Catholic article... Rebel. Oh, yeah, yeah. This article was written in 2004. <laughs> right. The Great Controversy. 19 years <laughs> ago. It's just. The anachronism. <laughs> <laughs> so, because they have a tract oh, <clears throat> dedicated to Adventism, that means they're totally clued in on everything that the SDA church is doing. And, he, and, and the reason why I, I'm pointing this out, folks, is because he is saying this to bolster the idea that the Roman church is totally clued in on the Adventist church's teachings and keep up with everything that's going on. 
this well, I mean, feeds into and plays into the narrative that they know what they're doing. They know their role. They're, they've been reached. They know what's going on. It's that sort of thing. And no, that's not the case at all. I mean, part of the problem too, like, you know, you have this idea that the world, the unfallen worlds are watching the Seventh-day yeah. Adventist church, right? So if you have aliens from different planets, the Galactic Federation of Empire, whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? If they're all watching your every move, right? Your guardian angel is watching your every move um, and recording with, uh, with, uh, with great scrutiny what you do, what you think and everything else like that, right? Um, there's always this conspiracy theory that, um, no, we're not Catholics. So, um, um, and there's always this conspiracy theory that, um, there's Jesuit infiltration to the highest levels of the general conference. I mean, people think Ted Wilson's a a Jesuit for goodness sake. I mean, like who cares, right? People think all this kind of stuff and they're always, and not every single SDA, let me clarify the more, um, the more, uh, Radical, if you will, maybe fanatical, right? uh, fanatical SDA. That's a good word. Uh, the Dr. O types, right? <laughs> <laughs> they are, um, they are more concerned with the fact that they're being watched, right? And yeah. that they believe that there is Jesuit infiltration, they believe that, um, uh, th- that there are demons walking around in the pews, like, and they're shake people's hands and say happy Sabbath. They believe this. You We're going to see that in a little bit too, by the way, folks. Right. You he's know not just, he's not just using metaphor. There. No, <laughs> so seriously. like these, these are, these are, these are serious things. So of course, why wouldn't the Roman Catholic, why wouldn't every single Roman Catholic that walks around and, you know, goes to the grocery store, why wouldn't they know that they're <laughs> yeah. and, and be waiting for them? Cause you know, they have to, you know, f- make sure they can cut off the escape plans when the Sunday law passes, so they can start, you know, you know, chopping people's heads off or whatever the case is, you know, it's crazy. And when you start to talk about it in these terms and really expose, like pull the curtain back and be like, yo, this is what is actually believed by these folks and what is taught, right? Then you get the, well, you can't deny that that's being taught. You can't deny that in the great controversy, Ellen White talks about how they're going to be hunted down and to be killed. Right and imprisoned and everything else, you cannot deny that because it's in there, right? Yeah. That, that is baked into the eschatology of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. You can't. It's get baked into the Great it. Controversy paradigm. That's the facts. Facts. Right, and the, the the crazy thing about this too is that it is it is empty, baseless fear and paranoia. Yeah. And I mean, these people live in constant fear and paranoia the the sda eschatology is 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 enmeshed in fear and paranoia suspicion of everybody they these people literally believe that the catholic church and all protestant churches are just at our worship services meetings like we're we're talking about them just yeah. just formulating our plants to pounce upon them to to harm them. When it's the like, fact no is, you are. For, far and wide, people are clueless about our SDA. Like, we're so busy trying to preach the gospel and, 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 and impact humanity. And uh, even me here in Jamaica and in a lot of ecumenical um, settings and other churches, there are so many who, who are clueless about some of the basic teachings of SDA. And I have to be educating them and, you know, letting them know who I am and literature I've written on them and that kind of stuff. And they get alarmed. And, you know, when can you come and give us a seminar or, or something to educate us more about them? Because, you know, here and there, uh, some of them are exposed to the crusades and, you know, some of the Dr. O kind of stuff. But, but generally, people are just living their daily lives. Christians are just living their daily lives and aren't. <laughs> in yeah, tune, not consume with what is going on with these people. It's but like the SDs literally believe that they are the center of everything. Religious, political, uh, social, I mean, everything. They think they are the center. And any leaf that blows or shakes, somebody's out to get them. The Catholics are coming for us. The Protestants are coming for us. I mean, 
you're just in constant fear and paranoia and you cannot live a healthy, normal, meaningful life. And sadly, that is what we see for the vast majority of SDAs who, who are mainstream and who are like the types of doctor, oh, Jamaica. The vast majority that make up Jamaica is the types like, like Dr. O. These people are constantly living in fear and paranoia. The Pope steps off his bed and puts on his bedroom slippers. The Sunday laws are upon us. And mm -hmm. the, the, the Pope <laughs> flatulates. It's coming. It's coming. And I kid you not, it may sound facetious, but it is crazy. Yeah. The, the fear and paranoia that, that these people live in. It's so true. It's like, I, I, I don't get how they can connect the dots other than to say you just haven't really connected with people outside of your bubble because what you said is so true. And it's like they think this mandate's going to come down from the government, this national Sunday law. And all of a sudden, Catholics and Protestants, there's just going to be like a download into their brain where they now just become a stooge for the government and all of a sudden hates these people who they yeah. know nothing about, this group that they're like, I thought these people just went to church on Saturday and they're vegetarians. The vast majority of Christians, that's all that they understand or know about Seventh-day Adventism. So it's so true. But again, he says, if you're quoting from their books, meaning Ellen White's writings, you've been reached and you know Adventism very well. So for all the people who constantly say, we have no clue what we're talking about, according to Dr. O's standard, the three of us must be Adventist experts because notice <laughs> simply quoting from the books, notice the way that Dr. O treats her writings, just simply quoting them. They can just be taken at face value. They understand them. Yet when I quote Ellen White's writings, all of a sudden they're super cryptic and you need an Adventist there to lead you along to help you really understand what's being said. Well, that's because you're misunderstanding them, Miles. Oh yeah, take I'm just taking them <laughs> taking them out of context, right? Every time, even if you read 17 pages worth, you know, in a row, <laughs> the same yeah. document. No, you take them out yeah. of context. I like, just find you know, that interesting. How that when it's con when it's convenient for you, oh yeah, they're just clear as day. And see, they understand everything about Adventism. But then somebody comes along who's rather critical, like myself, you, EJ. Now, all of a sudden, Ellen White's writings are completely cryptic. Yeah. Totally well, I mean, hard to understand. And we talked about this offline, uh, guys. And we, like I said, Miles and uh, E.J. and I talk like almost every day now, right? Yeah. Well, pretty much every day, you know? Um, and we have, uh, I was kind of sharing with them um, uh, uh, so a, a text I got. Well, it's online, but, you know, so the message back and forth on the thread. And this person said, you know, that uh, she's been sharing our videos with uh, some friends, some SDA friends, and they're like, oh, that, you know, you can't trust them. They're they're biased. And I'm like, yeah, everybody's biased. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like everybody's biased. It's OK. <laughs> it's whether or not like your bias is based in reality and in the truth of scriptures. And we're talking about scriptures, right? It has to yep. be based on the truth of scriptures, not just the scripture says yada, yada, yada. But what does it mean to say? What does it mean to teach you? Right. Um, you right. Know, and, and we've talked about that on multiple times. I'm going to take a quick stab real quick. Um, but that um, passage uh, and it's been made into a verse like, you know, I, and for those who don't know, the scriptures were not written primarily in chapters and verses when they were written. OK, right. for, uh, Psalms, probably Proverbs. Yes. You know, in different parts, some areas were just like swaths of poetry or they're written as narrative or letters and stuff like that verses and such were added later so when you are proof texting which is all that this is based on sdaism yeah. right and other stuff like that in the 19th 18th, 19th century when you're doing things like that you are taking proof text and proof specs shout out to thunder for that one right <laughs> of these small <laughs> bits and pieces of a greater narrative that mean to teach you something right and many times Touch not, taste not, handle not is my favorite one. It's meaning to tell you something different. Okay? Right. Touch not, taste not, handle not is a separate verse. Now, when you look at it in context, it's not saying that. Right? So when that gets applied to things uh, like the SDA hot potatoes, like, you know, tobacco products and alcohol and stuff like that, no one's saying that you should get drunk. No one's saying that you're supposed to go out and buy a carton of menthols or whatever the case is tomorrow. Right? But what I'm saying is look at these things in context. 
look at what the scripture is intending to tell you, um, intending to teach you, and see if this is what makes sense and comports with what's being taught. It's totally. very simple. Right. So true. 